Hey, Mark Walters here. Welcome to the Legacy Fuel Show, where you get fun ways to make money so you can catch up financially and enjoy your life. Today, we have the one and only Ron LeGrand on the show. Ron is a nationally recognized real estate expert and trainer with 40 plus years experience in both residential and commercial real estate property investing. He also has a 30 year history of hard money lending and brokering. His experiences include personally buying and selling over 3,500 single family houses and over $300 million in commercial property deals with student partners all over America. Ron LeGrand, welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. It's really my honor to be able to talk to you. I've admired you for years. You know, you're legendary in the real estate space. Obviously, uh, I was sharing some of my early influences with Jack Miller and John Schaub and Jimmy Napier. You're like, yep, I remember those. And it's not too many people that I get to share those names with that say, ah, oh, I remember when. So it really is a treat. I know, Mark. Most of them are dead. <laughs> as, as fate would have it, sadly. But hopefully they had a good time up until that point, yeah. just like you are. So, yeah, Ron, let me ask you, for those people that don't know you, don't know the background of you, where did you grow up and what was that like? Well, I grew up in Jacksonville, Florida, and I currently live in Jacksonville, Florida. I've been married for 59 years next month. Wow. To, to the same woman. I grew up broke trying to figure out how to make a living. Uh, went right into service stations and out of high school, managed several of those. And in 1982, I finally learned about real estate out of desperation and lack of food. And, uh, you know, as I was just making a living like most people out there, swapping hours for dollars, um, end of the money came long before the end of the month. And I, you know, I'd work, so I'm managing my own service station when I went into real estate and uh, working 12 hours a day, come home hot and greasy and grouchy. And, and uh, I, you know, I was looking for a better way. And I found it uh, March 12, 1982, which makes me 43rd year now, Mark. That's and amazing. I went to a, I went to a seminar because it was free. Absolutely didn't believe I was going to learn anything there. I knew it was a scam, but I went to check it out. And I had to miss J.R. Ewing Dallas on TV that night. And that was a big decision because he was my hero. OK, something compelled me to go. And from there, I got into a two day seminar that um, I couldn't afford, but I borrowed the money to get there. And that's the seminar that changed my path for the rest of my life. And, you know, when I woke up that day, I had no idea I was going to a life-changing seminar, okay? It didn't take me long to figure out that it wasn't a scam because when I got out of there, I did my first deal, a wholesale deal, and netted $3,000. Today, that's no biggie. Back then, that was a lot of money, okay? And so then I started doing them and doing them like you know, most of the people in the class just went home, went back to their normal life. I went home and started doing the stuff that I learned. And uh, next thing you know, we started getting checks, 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 checks. And over the years, learned the rest of the business. And somewhere along about 1987, started teaching the business and still do that to this very day and still buy houses. In fact, I got an offer accepted on one this morning and we're selling one next uh, week. So I'm still active. People think I'm old. I I'm not. They tell me I'm seasoned, not old. Yeah. Seasoned. They were, hey, we're marketers. It's all in the presentation, right? I'm going to keep on going until I can't keep on going anymore. But the truth is I'm retired pretty much, and I don't do a lot to run my businesses. I have a real estate business, and I have global publishing, which is in the information business, and they're all out there running it without me. Um, so I just show up and teach. Teach is what I almost about the only thing I do nowadays other than you know play around with houses. <clears throat> Gotcha. And we're going to be talking about that. And speaking right. of the teaching side, for everybody that would like to learn from somebody who obviously is the American dream, you know, going from struggling, thinking it's a scam to actually putting some things into motion and changing his life forever. Use my affiliate link to go check out one of Ron's free web classes. Just go to legacyfuel.com forward slash Ron. You're going to learn a lot of great things just like he did way back when. And then please implement them. So, so in other words, talk, your your t-shirt forward slash, yeah. Your name, correct. Name, Ron, Ron, okay, got it. <laughs> Ron, R-O-N. I think they can do that. Yeah. So take us back. You were busy back then. You were, like you said, you managed your own gas station, 
you're busy, you're coming home grouchy, dirty. I can, I can just picture what your fingers and fingernails look like. You mm -hmm. were working a lot and you were working when other people were not working because you had to be available. And then mm -hmm. you go and you learn some of these things. You talk about the wholesaling side of it. And I know for people that are in the space, they get what that is for people that are listening for the first time thinking, hey, I'm, I'm hearing from somebody who it changed his life for decades. I would love that as well. Can you step back in time a little bit, Ron? And you you said, hey, I did a deal and I did another deal. But what was that first deal like when you when you weren't thinking that, you know, you had the confidence, you hadn't had any deals in your in your rear view mirror yeah. yet? What was that like? It was scary. But really, all I did was put a property under contract and assign the contract. To this very day, wholesaling is the fastest way to make money. It's, you know, at a downside because that's all you get is a check. And you're going to give the government a big chunk of it because of short-term capital gains. But it is the fastest way to make money in real estate. And for all those folks that are entering out there, that's a big thing in this country right now. And I and I strongly suggest go ahead and start wholesaling. And while you go, we'll teach you rehabbing. And we'll also teach you the other side of the business, which is my favorite. And that's the term side of the business with houses that don't need rehab. Because those profit streams keep on coming, going for years and years and years. The biggest money you're going to make in real estate is when you don't sell the house. The longer you own the house, the more money it will make you. So there's the ugly house business, wholesaling and rehabbing. There's a pretty house business, terms. Either way, I don't use I don't use my money, and we most certainly don't use our credit. Uh, folks that come to Planet Run, if I catch them applying for a loan, I'm, I send somebody out to whoop them. That's the biggest mistake they can make is guaranteeing debt. When you guarantee debt, you risk your credit, you risk your assets, and you risk your marriage for what? To buy a house. And in addition to that, how many loans does one think they're going to go get before they get cut off at the knees? You see, Mark, um, a lot of people think that uh, the more money they borrow, the easier it is to borrow and the uh, better they look. Truth is, you and I know better banks don't look at it that way. The more they borrow, the less bankable they are, and sooner or later, they're going to get cut off. So learn to buy real estate without using your credit and without using little or none of your own money, and there is nobody to cut you off, and you can grow as fast as you want to grow and get filthy, stinking rich faster than you would imagine, especially if we take that entire business and plan it in our IRA where we don't have to pay taxes on the gain. So it's surprising how wealthy one can get. Uh, with these pretty houses, I get a big chunk of money now when I put a tenant buyer in it, <clears throat> measured in thousands, not hundreds. I get a monthly cash flow. I get appreciation, which has been big the last three years. I get depreciation. And I get debt pay down and I, all those goodies I get out of one house. Uh, of course, in the ugly house business, buy a wholesaling or rehab, I get one check and I'm, I'm done. So there's no future revenue. Um, I like for people to latch onto the idea of residual income so they keep getting paid whether they want to get out of bed in the morning or not. Oh, what are the, you know, economy sucks or whatever happens, whatever people worry about. I've been through six downturns in my life, Mark, and frankly, not one of them ever stopped me from buying houses because didn't take me long to learn it. I don't care what city you're in, what state you're in, who's the president, what the economic climate is, what the inflation is, what the interest rates are. People always are going to sell houses and other people are always going to buy them. So I can't think of a more stable industry than real estate. That's that's a good point. A lot of people listen to the news. They hear a lot of the doom and gloom. But what they've also got to spin around is how does that affect the investor who's actually helping the families that are going through the bad things that the news is talking about. Well, the truth is, the worse the economy gets, the easier it is to buy houses. Exactly so right. One has to learn to run toward the chaos and not run away from it and listen to everybody tell them. When you learn to operate without risk, which is what we do on Planet Ron, then nothing, nobody can hurt you. If you don't guarantee debt, that's the biggest risk you can take. And I am might be your first step toward bankruptcy if you're not careful. Because we don't get to determine what goes out there on us around us. We just uh, take care of our house so we don't have to worry what goes on in the White House. Well put. So you talk about reducing the risk or not having the risk because you're not signing on the dotted line, personally liable for some type of a loan commitment. Mm -hmm. For those that think, okay, that sounds good, but remembering how you were when you went to that first seminar thinking, hey, wait a minute, this just sounds too good to be true. Can you open the book a little bit on that, Ron, and talk about the terms that I know you yeah. are such a genius at? All right, well, let's take that uh, first seminar. I was learned very quickly that I could go borrow hard money, which is your specialty, 
And by the way, let me just tell you what it, the rate was back then. The prime rate was over 16% interest. I borrowed money at 18% interest, 10 points, and six months interest prepayment penalty when I paid it off. And I would only I could only get 60% of the after repaired value. Well, that that did that bid pretty well for me when I didn't understand the rest of the business, but I only borrowed 76 of those before I quit, Mark. <laughs> I learned how to get my own money from private individuals, either whether I get it from hard money lenders or individual private lenders. I never had to guarantee the debt because the debt to income ratio was so low. When I'm in a terms business, I'm either going to buy it with owner financing on a wraparound mortgage uh, or uh, first mortgage that's free and clear, or I'm going to buy it subject to take over the debt, or I'm going to lease it with an option to buy. The lease with an option to buy takes no money. The subject to usually takes no money, except maybe some closing costs. The wraparound sometimes will take a down payment and some closing costs, so we got a little bit of money there. Either one of those three, I'm buying the house that's in good shape, so when I buy for cash, I sell for cash, which means wholesale or rehab. When I buy on terms, I sell on terms, which means I'll lease option it to a tenant buyer. And I won't give the keys to a tenant buyer unless I get a minimum of 5% of the asking price down. Uh, and I always raise the price when I'm doing a lease option. So uh, if the leads come at me and they're junkers, we go to the cash side. If they come at me and they're not junkers, I got a very simple script that determines whether they're interested in doing some owner financing or uh, let me take over their debt or whatever. So my business is, you know, to the point for all of my students, there's really not a whole lot left to do because we've spent so many years uh, setting up the systems and also the outsourced companies to do everything you need to do. Got a company that takes the uh, phone calls 24 hours a day, buying and selling. I've uh, got another company will make outbound calls to sellers for you. That's our own VAs uh, where, where I'm at. Uh, and, uh, and, and then the systems do the rest. Uh, we don't we don't take calls from anybody that we haven't uh, had been screen, uh, pre-screened to see if they have a reason to do business with us. We don't go show houses, and we got this automation thing today, and we we're in a virtual world today. And every year as it goes by, frankly, there's less and less that one has to do. I'm a good example of that. You know, I buy two or three houses a month, but I got somebody doing the work for me, all of the work. I just okay whether we're going to buy it or not. And uh, even if I rehab it, I only go to it once. And that's it. That's to meet the contractor. Uh, well, I go to it twice. I also go to it when it's like I'm going to one in the morning and we got a contract on yesterday just to make sure I want to go through with it. So I mean, we made the offer before we even seen the house. But I don't want to get the, give them the deposit until I go out and look at it for myself because I've learned that those pictures sometimes fool you when you go online, you know. So anyway, I've, uh, we've streamlined the business to the point where anybody can do it. And again, the easiest thing for a newcomer coming in is wholesaling houses, because frankly, a sixth grader could wholesale a house. You, know, you may not have to buy the house, there's no closing costs. Um, I use the example of five of them that we did here recently. Five houses, put all five of them under contract, had a $10 deposit on all of them, they are all FISBOs, never bought them, never had any closing costs, and sold them and netted $147,000 on those five and we were in and out of those five in less than two months total. Um, and, and because I'll tell you, you put them out there to, to buyers who want to rehab them and retail them, you're going to get flooded with calls. So that's a good, good example. Our total investment was 50 bucks, Mark. 50 that was bucks. amazing. Nobody asked me to pull out a credit report because I wouldn't, even, I, wouldn't, I didn't intend to buy them. I would have closed on it if I needed to. Why? If I can find a buyer before I even have to close. So, you know, you got FISBOs and you got MLS. I teach them both. But I'm going to tell you, all the best deals are in the world of FISBOs. You just got to figure out how to find them and you got to, all the training you could stand on that. And that's one we're constantly upgrading and working on, best ways to find deals. And uh, everything is so virtual today. Crap. You don't even have to leave your house if you don't want to. In fact, I got students buying houses all over the country from where they sit. Virtual investing has become so popular. And for people that are hearing FISBO, it's an acronym for sale by owner. And of course, there's a lot of opportunity there, like Ron is saying. Inside of his trainings, he's got a lot of those kinds of things. Definitely check out his terms web class, you know, because if you mm -hmm. want to keep money in your pocket, if you don't want to have any risks and you want to do some of the things that he's talking about and learn some of the finer details, simply use my affiliate link 
legacyfuel.com forward slash Ron, R-O-N, and you can do that. It's I'll absolutely you, free. I'll tell you what that's all about. Yeah, please. It, it takes you step by step through the terms business and how it shows you where the money is and where the other incomes are. And it shows you why you don't go apply for a loan. And uh, the simple scripts that I use to pre-screen people in seconds as to whether we should go any further or not. Because the truth is, most sellers won't take terms. It's that simple, okay? So we're only looking for the ones that will. And we want somebody else to do all of the work so that we got to want, want make one, one closing call, as we call it, to determine whether we're moving forward or not. So that's there's very little left to do in this business, believe me. Well, it's like you talked about, you've got this system set up over yeah. all these years. You've figured out, hey, how do I remove myself from this business to make it more efficient and scalable and the different systems? So when you have virtual assistants that are calling and doing a lot of that legwork, especially for people that are busy, much like you were when you first started, you just don't have the hours and you don't have as much money at the end of the month as you'd like. If you can have some of those systems in place, that makes all the difference in the world. And then you're not the one hearing from yeah. the seller saying, no, I'm not interested. You're only talking to the person that went through that filtering saying, yeah, I'm interested. And then you talk to him and then you try and help him put something together, right? That's right. Now that wasn't always like that. You know, when I started 1982, Al Gore hadn't invented the internet yet. We didn't have all these cool things we got right now. We actually had to do work back then. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Ron, you talk about, I, I've heard you mention work for equity. Mm -hmm. And I really like that idea because equity equals profit. So what are you talking about when you're saying work for equity? Okay. Um, I, I buy a house on terms, probably taking it over to the debt subject to that needs work. Okay. Instead of doing the work, I'll put it out there as a work for equity house. You do the work with your money and your labor, and I'll discount the price a little for you. So I lease option it to them based on that, and they agree to that, That's which is a special option agreement, that, which dictates clearly you're doing the work in exchange for a discount in price. So they go in the house, and uh, they uh, they pay me rent, and they're not getting in the house till I get a multi-thousand dollar deposit from them. And most of the time, they sit there for a few years and don't do anything, and I don't care. So they move out, and we're back where we started, but we're going to go collect another non-refundable deposit now for somebody else in there. And sooner or later, usually somebody will buy. I've had properties marked with, uh, let me see, I just sold one that I've had six tenant buyers in over a period wow. of about uh, 11 years. Six tenant buyer ever. I collected more money on the non-refundable deposits than I paid for the property. Not to That's mention cool. all that rent and that sales price when I sold it. <clears throat> oh my gosh. So, so people understand, you've gotten the deed to this property. You've structured something really really nice with terms. You found somebody that was motivated for sale by owner, something along those lines. Then you're turning around, you're offering this property that needs work on a lease with an option to purchase. So would you please explain, because I know there's a few different ways that you're profiting potentially if the deal went all the way through in a scenario like this that is exciting. So would you mind mentioning, like you mentioned the upfront money, you mentioned the rent, things like that. Share a little bit more about that and uh, well, kind of the potential profits as well. First of all, I got to clear up everybody's thinking. If you're going to do a work for equity property, your goal is not to cash out of it. Okay. Write that down because it's opposite of everybody teaches you. I put them in there. I get a deposit up front, a big deposit, not no security deposit. Again, in thousand. I give them all the time they want to go fix it up and then go to the bank and get a loan. But the reality is, Mark, most people just don't even do it. They'll sit there two, three, whatever years, and then they'll say, oh, I'm going to move. Uh, so, all right, sorry, go ahead and move. So in my mind, I just bought another house without buying another house because I'm going to put it right back on the market, whatever condition it's in, and do it all over again. Okay, I got one house six times, and I've got several that have been done multiple times. I give them a great opportunity. They got a great opportunity to fix the house, get a discount on the house, and clean up whatever credit or whatever that is not uh, allowing them to get a loan now. Um, and I uh, usually give them two years, but I don't ever put them out. So two years passes, a lot of them just sit there and keeps paying rent. Even though their options expired, if they actually did want to buy it, then I'd you know, give them a great deal on it. But in other words, it's the way to exit your houses that you don't want to do the repairs. On. And I, 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 if let's say I, I know a house will be worth 250 and it would need 30 or in work, 
Yeah, I, I, what I do is I take about fifteen thousand dollars off of that two fifty, and so their a purchase price is say two thirty five. So they do get rewarded for their labor, uh, but I'm not going to you know I'm not going to sell it to them for fifty percent off just because it needs some work. Owner occupants will always pay more than investors, always. So, but but the downside is I got a lease option to them and I can't cash out of it right away and I keep a lot of people from wanting to do it. Upside is I'm in, I'm out, I didn't touch the house. I just collect money, uh, money on front, money weekly, and maybe they'll cash out later, or maybe they don't. So I just set it and forget it. And I call them golden geese. They just keep on laying golden eggs. I can understand why. And unlike a rehabber type of a property where you've got work that needs to be done, if you're thinking, I'm going to take this on, you've got the cost of the debt, you've got the holding period, and, and then you're finding a buyer. All of that is costly. In this situation, you're turning that property very quickly. So it, you're getting Many back. times you've got tenant lined up before we even close on it. Yeah, so sweet. Now, it, for, it ain't gonna, when you're buying all cash, Remember what I said, I, I buy for cash, I sell for cash, because if I'm buying all cash uh, and I'm writing a check, I'm not going to leave my money in there for the years it might take somebody to cash me out. So uh, nothing stopping me from going and get a private loan from people I find or somebody like you, but now it's got to be a longer term loan and not a short term loan. Uh, and in other words, I got to get my cash back or I'm not going to put a tenant buyer in the house. Right. Now, you talk about the acquisition strategy dictates your exit strategy. If it's cash yeah. in, you're going to you're going to get that backwards. Cash. My All exit that. strategy is going to dictate dictate my entrance. And exactly. I'm going to tell you right now. Let's say the house is ugly and needs rehab. You're either going to wholesale it or you're going to rehab it because you're likely not going to buy it and fix it and rent it unless you go down to the bank and get a loan and qualify for it. And that I'm going to hurt you if I catch you doing that. I promise you. That is not the way to build your empire. That Burr thing you see on the internet, first step to bankruptcy, in my opinion. That B ought to stand for bankruptcy, not buy. <clears throat> well, you've got and the I, perspective and the time in this business to be able to say exactly that, Ron. Well, what, I've also what got happens... 40, 42 years of experience. And any, everything that I tell everybody not to do means I've only done it three or four times. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I like that. Hey, you mentioned... Selling with a lease option when there is uh, work that needs to be done. What about the properties that you're finding the work doesn't need to be done, but you wouldn't mind getting that that deposit higher than normal rent mm -hmm. and the potential for that's, a profit at the end? What about that? That's the ones you want to keep. Yeah. I call those the golden fleece. I got little or no money in them to buy them. I'm getting terms. And I know I'm going to get a lot more money back when I put a tenant buyer in it than I got in the house up front. And it's very short term. And then from then on, it's a golden goose. Why would I want to sell a house that's producing all those income streams for me? And even if I do, I'll get a very small check compared to what I'll get over time. Um, like I said, I got one right down the street, but I mean, I've had since 2014. And uh, I crunched the numbers for a recent seminar on that thing. Uh, the first time I put a tenant buyer in it, they gave me a $50,000 non-refundable deposit on a $395,000 house. Mark, that house has made me $658,000 in the 10 years that I've had it, and I still own the house. By the time you add up debt pay down, appreciation, depreciation, that forfeited deposit, and whatever else I do, oh, monthly cash flow, I'm telling you, it's amazing how much these things will produce for you if you just change your attitude about selling. Now, look, it doesn't mean I don't sell. Uh, obviously, I'm selling all the wholesale deals and I'm selling all the ones we rehab. But, but I don't sell terms deals if I can help it. And frankly, if I don't help them go, if I don't pound on them and beat on them to go get their credit cleaned up or whatever, people just won't do it. And if they ask me, I'll help them. But most of them won't ask you that. Uh, and um, I, I know your listeners are going to say, well, why, 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 why? I quit trying to figure out why about 40 years ago. Okay. If you try to justify why people do the things they do, you're going to drive yourself nuts, right? And there's a lot of reasons people don't buy. By the way, that house down the street, they moved out two years, forfeited $50,000. Forfeited, all right? I, I thought they'd buy it. They didn't. Um, I forgot to ask them why. I don't care. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. And like you said earlier, with these deposits, you're like, it's not just a little bit. It's thousands. There's an example, 50000 and that 
that house was not like a million plus dollar house. That's a beautiful house. It was three years old. It's in a gated community. Uh, and I actually got more than 10%, but I, I always, I won't take less than 5% and I shoot for 10% and sometimes I get more based on the quality of the house and the quality of the neighborhood. So when I bought that house for 351, it's now appraised for about 700,000 bucks. It's amazing how the market has gone up. I've got real estate. Yeah, exactly. And everybody's got an economy that is personal to them that needs people to help them and come in. And like you're helping the for sale by owners. And he talks about mm -hmm. on his uh, web class over there at legacyfuel.com forward slash Ron. Definitely check that out. Ron, with your 40 plus years of experience, I know that you have shared do's and don'ts with people when it comes to setting up an entity. So thing, people do things properly. What do you tell people so they don't get themselves in trouble? Are you saying, uh, did you say entity in that somewhere? Entity, yeah, entity. Yeah, right. well, I teach that as well. Mm -hmm. um, I, I teach asset protection, entity structuring, uh, tech, all of these things that I say I teach, I, I, I've opened people's eyes, but obviously you got to go to attorneys to complete the process. Um, that's part of, I, I can't teach people how to make money without teaching them how to protect the money along the way. And I can tell you very few people know more about that than I do, uh, again, from experience. See, I went through the 2008 crash, and um, I'll tell you what, it, it, all the projects that I had going, all commercial, uh, the mistake was that I was building stuff to sell, not building stuff to rent. And uh, no, those all didn't work out. So I, I don't want other people going through that. I, I see so many people lost everything, years worth of work, lose everything, because most of the time it's something they couldn't even control, like that 2008 recession we had. I mean, telling you, that hurt a lot of people, especially the developers and the builders. Uh, they had to shut down. Many of them went out of business. Got one here in Jacksonville that his, his extra strategy was a bullet to his head. <clears throat> so I don't want, you can't guarantee debt. You'll never get into trouble like that. Nobody's ever coming after you for money if you don't guarantee debt. The most you can lose is the house that you got for free or close, and I've already made thousands of dollars on it. If you guys think about that, it's going to hit you about 3 a.m. You're going to wake up in bed and say, holy crap, I can do this without risk. And the answer is yes, but you're going to have to learn from uh, somebody seasoned, not old, seasoned. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> that's not where the seasoned on, well. On the internet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you know what? That was not exclusive to the 2008 crash because it had happened in the late 1980s, early 1990s. That's, I was you know, there. Yeah, you know. I mean, There's six it, of them. My, yeah, mind-boggling how those same type of bad loan scenarios crash everything, and people think, "Oh my gosh, we're you know." You'd assume they've learned from it. No, no. So definitely yeah. want to uh, heed that advice and so that you're you not know, signing. I want you guys to get your head around this now. Are we going to have another economic downturn? The answer is, of course. It's just that nobody knows when. Okay. And it has a lot to do with who gets elected in November. Don't get me off on that track. What you got to focus on right now is getting your own house in order. I'm going to suggest you get rid of all the guaranteed debt that you have and replace these houses with non-recourse debt. You make a lot more money and with no risk. And also get your cash flow up as fast as you can and get some money in the bank. And I promise you, you sleep a lot better with money in the bank than with no money in the bank. I mean, you just sleep better. In fact, sometimes I tell folk you probably even have better sex when you have money in the bank. I don't know that for sure. Okay. <laughs> but uh, you got to take care of your own house. So you got to take a good hard look at where am I? What have I got? What am I at risk with? And what am I going to do about it? You ought to do it now because there's no question we're going to have another downturn. I, we just don't know when. We always do. Look back. Look back. Always going to have recessions. Up, downs, ups, down. But uh, one thing about real estate, it might go down a little while, but it's going to come right back with a vengeance. In 2008, Mark, here where, where I live, we lost 40% of our home values in less than two months. 40%. And it took years for it to come back. And when it finally did, a few years ago, it came back with a roar. And now we had this hyperinflation. But um, if the people who sold because they didn't understand how to hold during that uh, now looking back and say, oh, God, what if I hadn't have sold that house or houses? Man, you know, what if I'd have got more training? And you asked me, how can we lose, by the way? And I can tell you right now, the biggest mistake I see people making is trying to get into this business and eliminate the training part. 
there's training and then there's short videos on the internet. You're never going to learn a business by watching videos on the internet. You're just not. And if I can be frank, is it okay if I be frank here? Please. Uh, you're not going to like what I'm about to say. <laughs> All right. Go for it. I want to hear it. I'm ready. I'm preparing myself here. Well, I tell tell like it is. Some people, most people like it. Some people don't. Okay. Anytime you go on the internet and watch a video, I'm sure you think the purpose of that is because these people are so kind that they just want to educate you for no money. Okay. If you believe that, you should ask yourself, well, how do they make a living? Okay. They make a living by providing education that they are uh, qualified to provide. Uh, well, why don't they just do it for free? Well, who's going to pay all the bills? <laughs> who's going to pay for all the employees and all the marketing and everything that goes into running a business? Obviously, they have to get paid to stay in business. So what? Well, so maybe one day you'll be one of those folks who wants to get paid for what you know. All right, I've get, been getting paid since 1987 for what I know. But I've also been doing it and keeping on up the market to, to, make, to know, make sure that I'm continually qualified to swap your money for my education. So don't think anybody's going to give you a free education. It, it just There is no such thing. Whatever business you get into. I've had six restaurants. I, know, uh, I used to think that I, could, that I could eat in a restaurant and learn how to run it. <laughs> no, not hardly. Same with real estate. Okay, Because I attended the seminar, don't make me an expert in real estate. So the school of hard knocks is extremely expensive and nobody's going to get an education for free. They're just not. You will learn some stuff for free, no doubt about it, but you're not going to get trained properly. And if you don't get trained properly, it'll take you years to get that information. And it may take you totally out of business because I can tell you that all of our problems we have in real estate are self-inflicted because of what we don't know or what we do know and don't use. Um, you, if you learn from the people that have been there and done that, and I'm not talking about me, uh, there's a whole bunch of people out there that are qualified, but you can multiply that times 10 for the people that aren't qualified. You know, I go sell a couple of houses and now I'm going to create a course type thing. I know because I train these folks how to be trainers once I see that they're qualified. All of them are my students. Like most of the people out there training today at one time came through uh, my training and I still train them because, uh, you know, I don't worry about competition never worried about it mark even way back i was so busy doing deals i didn't have time to worry about what somebody else is doing yeah i get it yeah you know and you you live what you're passionate about what ultimately changed your life in the very beginning story and one of the things that you shared here ron as we're getting close to the end and I'm, you've been so gracious with your time and I, I truly appreciate it i know the listeners do too you had mentioned ira money and the fact that people can be doing things like you're sharing and being able to utilize what they've got there as well. What are you sharing with people in those regards? Well, there's actually three ways to do deals tax-free that I know of. First one, of course, is the Roth IRA, which anybody can have. Just got to learn how to use it to buy real estate. And whatever you buy in that entity, the profits go in that entity. In other words, let's say I just did five wholesale deals at $10 a piece for earnest money deposits. Okay, those five deals that I put up $50 turned into $147,000. Now, if I'd have done those in my IRA, that's $147,000 that would have went into my IRA with an IRA investment of $50, just like that, okay? You're not going to get rich in your IRA by contributing to it. You're going to get rich by using it to leverage it multiple different ways into real estate. Uh, there's also a solo 401k. It's very similar to a Roth IRA. Uh, you don't pay taxes on it. Now, you can elect uh, traditional or, or be treated like a Roth. You want to elect a Roth, in my opinion. Uh, and it's got advantages. Uh, you can do deals in both of these things. Uh, There's a very inexpensive and it is set up. Now you need an LLC and only husband and wife can be a part of that. So it's got limitations. I can't have other employees and other businesses and wind up having a solo. But here's one thing. If I have a Roth and I take over somebody's debt or I create debt, that property, when it's sold, is going to trigger taxes. And in fact, probably more taxes than your personal income tax bracket. Uh, so that's a downside for doing terms deals in your Roth. However, you can do them in your solo 401k and still don't pay taxes. And, and taking over properties with debt is okay by the IRS consent. 
And then the third one is a, an exchange where we sell one house, take that money and put it for down payments on three other houses that we get with owner financing. And I ain't going to go into that, but I will tell you this, it will quadruple your uh, income. It'll quadruple your asset value. And uh, it, it will yeah, it'll quadruple your estate value by simply trading one house into three. And the key to that is what we're going to use with that money out of house one, we're going to put into three houses in the form of a down payment, not do a one for one exchange like most people think they are. Uh, and that'll blow you away when you get a chance to see those numbers. <clears throat> well, Ron, you amaze me. Uh, just you're like, well, there's three ways to do it. And you can use this one versus that one. Here's why this is good. Now you are frozen on my screen, Ron, and yet you gave amazing information. So I think what we're going to do here is I'm going to let people know how to go for free to check out your web class on terms. Simply mm -hmm. go to my affiliate link, legacyfuel.com forward slash Ron. You'll get over there. He's going to pick up where he left off and really open your eyes to so much more details here that I think you're going to get really excited with. Can I Ron, make a point on that, Mark? Please. That is free. That is literally a free training. It's about an hour and 15 minutes long and it shows you the terms business. So, but to be honest, I expect you to go there and learn this cool thing we call terms. Then I expect you to become a customer, okay? Because you're going to get offered a course at the end. I hope that don't shock anybody at a 60% off price. And then you can decide whether you want to get in Planet Ron or not and how far you want to go in Planet Ron. I make millionaires, and I have been doing it for an awful, awful lot of years, all over the world, not just the United States. All right, so I'll shut up and let you. Planet Ron, I like that. I need a planet, Ron. That's I, that's what I'm doing wrong. I don't have a planet. I don't even have a star. That's okay. I'm working on it. Well, <laughs> listen, you've been so gracious with your time. Obviously, uh, over there, using my affiliate link, you can discover everything that Ron just said, legacyfuel.com forward slash Ron. Ron, before we go, is there any one last number one tip for our Legacy Fuel listeners that you'd like to leave them with here? They might be seeing you in freeze frame screen there, but your words are, we. it's bringing it all to life. We can totally picture it in our mind. All right. My advice is to be very careful to whom you listen. The whole world is full of crap. I got a t-shirt that says that. Uh, trust <laughs> well, me, verify. Must be true. Uh, and um, don't be afraid to ask for help and pick who you learn from as to what they have done, not what they talk about. Uh, because most men have this thing called testosterone. And the last thing we're going to do is follow instructions or ask for help. Okay, I understand. I am one of them. Right? But uh, you, you, if you're going to go into a new, uh, a new business, you need to learn about the business before you go get in the business. Save yourself a lot of grief. And frankly, your education won't cost you that much, but if not getting it will cost you a hundred times more than if you get it. And I'm not say that to self-serve, you know, that's a business I'm in as well, but I see so many people just plundering into this thing, not having any idea what they're doing, making stupid mistakes, stupid to me, um, you know, as I did when I started. Okay. So uh, get the proper training and be careful to whom you listen and don't believe everything you hear because most of it just passed on from ear to ear to ear to ear, by the time you get down the line of ways, worthless information. And by the way, that includes people that have initials after their name, okay? Be very careful. Just because they got initials, to me, that just means they passed the test to get their license. Good point, good point. Well, Ron, thank you again so much for being on the show. It means the world to me that you spent the time here. I'm always learning from you, and I know other people can too. For free, you can check out Ron's free web class over at LegacyFuel.com forward slash Ron. Ron, thank you so much for being on the show with me. My today. pleasure, Mark. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. I'll get on here again and we'll talk about a subject, whatever you want to talk about. Oh, bless your heart. I really appreciate that. All right, All right, right. everybody. That is it for me and for Ron. Thanks for being here with us today. I'll share more with you in the next Legacy Fuel show. Now is the time to fuel up, make money, and enjoy your life. Hey, Mark Walters here. Thank you so much for being a part of this episode. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss what's coming next. I'm always looking for good things to share with you so we can continue to have fun in this journey together. So if that sounds good to you, let's pick up where we left off and choose another clip so we can get right back to it.